Thank you, uh, moderators. Thank you, organizers, and my dear friend Dr. Shankar Gupta and the Bengal Oncology Society in ISO for this wonderful conference in this uh, wonderful venue. Uh, very unusual, but so excellently organized. Uh, a big uh, shout out to all the organizing uh, team for this excellent uh, meeting. I would like to now invite my esteemed panelists for this panel discussion, Dr. Uh, Kakali Chaudhary, radiation oncologist. Dr. Mainak Chakraborty, surgical oncologist, Dr. Supratim Bhattacharya, uh, surgical oncologist, Dr. Somen Das, surgical oncologist, Dr. Naziba Kondekar, radiation oncologist, uh, Dr. Sandeep Ganguly, medical oncologist, Dr. Manas Roy, sir, uh, med, uh, surgical oncologist, Dr. Mahapatra, medical oncologist, Dr. Subhash, uh, uh, I think Dr. Uh, Dr. Madhu is taking his place, Dr. Madhu from Devendram. Uh, surgical oncologist, uh, Dr. Prashant Chandra Das, surgical oncologist, and Dr. Ashutosh Daka. Do we have enough chairs? <laughs> I think if any hospital had this kind of great team, they would they would just be just rolling in happiness. What say Ganesh? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> So I would uh, so complete uh, cancer rectum is the thing that actually led uh, the the way in organ preservation, and uh, I think that is the one that is keeping its uh, keeping keeping its keeping its keeping the showing the light of the way of organ preservation. But then, as Thomas Hobbes said, science is the knowledge of consequences, and then we have now come far in radiation cancer, so as to probably think about whether surgery is necessary, surgery can be avoided. And let's see what uh, our esteemed panelists have to say of the same. Being a surgical uh, meeting, I thought that we should also discuss about uh, about who are the patients whom we should uh, actually aim for the, these kind of treatment. And this was one such patient. This is a 55-year-old diabetic. 15 years uh, he's been a diabetic. The growth is just 4 to 5 centimeters from the anal verge. The MRI I have put up, it is uh, a T3N1 tumor. And uh, in this patient, I uh, I would like to ask uh, the panel, starting from uh, the surgeons first, uh, uh, Dr. Manas Rao, you can take it, take it first. What would be your rationale of treatment planning? Will it be surgery, surgery alone, uh, short course RT, long course RT, or TNT? We know that surgery alone is not. So, what is your, what would you go for? I'll take a step backwards. If you to see T3 A and B. That behaves as CT2. It's, it's a C, uh, CT3B. B, okay. yeah. If the MRF is clear. Yeah, the MR, MRF is clear. Okay. I'm a good surgeon. I would do upfront surgery. Upfront surgery. Would the medical oncologist agree? No. <coughs> Dr. Daga? Because I am biased to the It's an N1 disease. N1 disease. It's N1. See, N1 doesn't actually, uh, N1 does not uh, uh, translate into increased local recurrence if you are a good surgeon. Every surgical firm should audit the uh, data. And if, you, if I can quote a study by Heat, offshore of mercury study, annals of surgery. You know, they had T3, T4 patients, M1 patients, MRF free. The recurrence was as low as patients who have had pre op radiation. Radiation, uh, anybody wants to take Moral state? Yes. Yeah. yeah, Dr. Uh, Dr. Murli, yeah. I just want to come in. Uh, sure. Uh, I do. Look, in that case, what if the patient needs adjunct treatment? Sorry? What if the patient ends up as T3, uh, anything more than T3 or more positive? Wouldn't he need an adjunct therapy? Yeah, of course. And in that case, wouldn't he give him new adjunct better than giving it adjunct? That's the only part. No, see, the, 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 the reason why you give new adjunct is to decrease the uh, CRM positive rating. But if it's, and biologically, T3, A, B behave same as T2. You know? And if it's just one little node, if it's a posterior tumor, huge CRM, why bother with a preoperative? If it's an anterior lower rectum, avoiding the prostate, then I would certainly ad advocate some. It has to be a la carte. Okay. Yeah. So the issue is if we are taking this as T3A or B. 
So there is a possibility when you operate, it gets upstaged. So it should not be a T3C1 when you get a post-op specimen. So there lies the problem set. Sir, I think it's more about the site. If it is upper rectal and it is T3 A and B, then it's okay. If you no, this is a lower rectum. This is 4 to 5 centimeters. This is a mid yeah. to lower rectum. So there is no upper rectum we are not even discussing. We are discussing the lower rectum. So lower rectum, I think uh, we have to give some form of uh, therapy and then. Because after, uh, if, the, uh, uh, if we start with uh, surgery and after that the uh, patient will need adjuvant RT, then the plus complication of adjuvant RT will be moved. So, so most of the data, I, I would lit, I beg to lit, so most of the data does show that uh, uh, new adjuvant is a little better in terms of all, not only the local recurrence rate but also quality of life. The real question here I really wanted to ask was, is a complete response uh, aim of your treatment, Dr. Dhaka? A complete clinical response in a patient like this, a T3 BN1. Not the aim of treatment, definitely. Not the aim of treatment. And uh, what would you say, Dr. Uh, Kakali? Yes, uh, uh, the role till date uh, data uh, suppose that this uh, new adjuvant therapy goal is to make it operable and if it is inoperable and just take care of the uh, control the local recurrence rate. Local recurrence rate will be low in this preoperative therapy. So why would you think about new the NCCN guideline says that you have to give total new adjuvant yeah, therapy. Why why do you want to give a patient who's uh, actually operable upfront, resectable upfront that uh, subject to new adjuvant therapy followed by a short course uh, and then subject to surgery. Yes. Yeah, uh, for this patient, if we give NACTRD and the patient has complete clinical radiological response, then we can go for wait and watch for this patient. Uh, the, I, yeah. The yes. reason for the total new adjuvant came because the patients the, uh, first of all, the controversy, there is a controversy whether the adjuvant chemotherapy has any benefit for a post university RT rectum. Because some patients, many majority of the patients could not complete it. So there was some borderline benefit whether the adjuvant chemotherapy has any benefit or not. But people do relapse. They have more of a distant recurrence. So that's why the aim was, come, let's not follow the chemotherapy in the new adjuvant setting. And if we're getting a complete response, they obviously has done better. They have a good disease-free disease-free survival rate. And for those, if they have a complete response, we can go for a wait and watch. Doctor Dhaka? Yes, sir. You can take it and then Doctor Dhaka. I think sir, three issues are there. First thing is patient compliance. And uh, second is the management of macromedicines. And third is uh, if the patient has a clinical CR. So these three are the advantages if we uh, offer a TAT approach. Yes, sir. Uh, so patient compliance is a very important thing. Second thing is just a, a very, everybody has a different opinion on that. Adjuvant chemotherapy in rectum is still limited. So, so there is no, uh, nobody can tell that I have a phase 3 data that, I, that adjuvant chemotherapy do work. But yes, we have a data, enough data for a new adjuvant. So consolidation chemotherapy in the new adjuvant setting has been studied well, whereas in the adjuvant setting does not have too much of basis. So my, um, this I think, you wanted to uh, Yes, so, so uh, regarding your first question that whether HCR is uh, a surrogate marker of OS or not, there was a good meta-analysis which has clearly mentioned that HCR is not a surrogate marker of DFS or OS, that is number one. Number two, there are three issues which we need to address in, in the treatment of cancer rectum. That is, a distant failure, local failure, and the quality of life in, in terms of stoma-free life. So here, uh, the concept of TNT came, the main aim, aim was uh, to reduce the distant failure. There was a 27% distant failure in previous studies. So they mainly tried to address that uh, particular segment to reduce the distant failure. And you have an advantage of going for a uh, watch and wait policy where you can avoid stoma. So you are addressing both these issues there. Local local recurrence is same. So I, I would completely agree. If you notice, there is a huge hiatus 
between what the Habergama published in 2004, the original uh, weight and watch, after that till the Rapido and the Prodige came, we did not talk about weight and watch at all. There was a huge interim gap in which we talked only about surgery, then about adjoint uh, RT, then came the, the Swedish trials which showed the role of neoadjoint RT. Now, the problem with uh, the, these two, the, especially the Rapido is that, yes, yes, especially the Rapido is that it is a very Dutch centric trial and their problem is distant Mets rather than local recurrence and as, I, as we will we'll discuss it, we need to know about what our Indian data is and what our Indian patients look like. Uh, though these two trials are promising, one thing is that the Prodige, I don't want to go into the details of the Rapido and the Prodige but because this is, we are completely on a different panel today. Uh, the Prodige talks about Folferinox. Between the two, I believe the Prodige is a better trial, the better protocol. Will our patients tolerate Folferinox? Uh, not at all, definitely not. For sure. And especially uh, patients who have received the radiation and when we give chemotherapy, the added diarrhea is too much. Yes, sir. It depends uh, for a very elderly patient, like uh, we have, it's a bias, it's a personal bias or a practical bias. Like if there is, we uh, discuss our cases in the MDT, it uh, feels that there is an extensive nodal burden and all, then I think we will go for a full Firinox then radiation. But if there is not much of a nodal, extensive mm -hmm. nodal burden, then most of the patients we are going for short course with a rapid protocol. Right, sir. And just, uh, yes, yes. as uh, you were pointing out, uh, I, I would have shifted out to total neogenetics, some selected some other patients. But still, we are not like a prodigy protocol. Because of the concern that the patient would tolerate the confidence. So most of our new uh, TNT are also, even in our unit are still about fall fox. A rapido protocol or something like induction chemotherapy for the short course are then that would be the way forward. So uh, another interesting thing and uh, about the rapido was that it showed nearly a 10% conversion when the patients were subjected to surgery. And we know that the uh, uh, conversion from lap to open is a surrogate marker for poorer survival. So that's something, another thing that is really co you know concerning in the Indian scenario. Uh, this was the Rapido data. Now I'm I'm just building up a case about wait and watch, and that is why I'm not really getting into the meat of the wait and watch <laughs> argument. This was the data for Rapido local regional recurrences. You can see that these curves have started separating out after three years and the entire thing about the opera is about three years. We will discuss the opera later. So, uh, would you like to comment, the medical oncologist, uh, uh, would you like to comment? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so the rap we talked about local regional failure. Now in India, the local recurrences are more important than the distant failures. Most of our patients are mucinous, they are locally advanced. So these curves have started separating after three years. And now we are, the wait and watch essentially now has come into the limelight because of the opera trial. And now these, we can see the curves, they are separating out after three years. So do you think that we are talking too soon about TNT being a massive success? Uh, mean as a standard of as a standard of care. So we, we are talking in context of TNT followed TNT, by TNT followed by surgery or because the TNT has led to a 24% uh, complete responses with the uh, wait and watch uh, being a standard uh, a policy See, to look at. As, as far as what <coughs> uh, thinking I have, the first all the uh, recurrence whether it's a metastatic whether it's a local, they happens usually in first two to three years. I cannot explain these stuff to be very frank. I don't have any logical explanation for this. Uh, well, I must thank uh, Manoj for giving me the abstract. Like uh, yesterday, only the five-year follow-up came, where the Rapido arm had a numerically higher local recurrence. Numerically, like, uh, but it was not statistically significant. There was no difference in the overall survival. And it was mainly of a surgical pattern also was there, like was there any MRF rupture, was there mesorectal rupture, was there whether there is a margin positive is there. But first of all we have to see what was the intent of giving the new adjuvant therapy. Our main aim was not to reduce the local regional failure. 
Our main aim was to reduce the distance so that the patient can live for a long. So one, we cannot take another surrogate marker and say, oh wait, TNT is not that great, that is not the way. For each trial, we have to use the uh, end point and then make the therapy. So maybe you say that TNT still has a... TNT has still a has a, because local regional failure does not make... So you, you, mm -hmm. you see TNT replacing the standard protocols in the days to come? I think we have already started. Most of us have already of started. started. Uh, the data is in, uh, <coughs> data is still immature from our center, so with time we can definitely see. Yes, sir. Just uh, something practical I want to share. So in the last 10 years, we have done close to 540 uh, rectal resection, both in the in e lab. Uh, so our three years uh, disease-free local, you know, this uh, local recurrence is 5.6 percent. Uh, most gets long. In the CTRT, but 45, 46 patients have got rapid over, and surgically it's a nightmare. It's very tough rectum. In one patient, I simply could not staple the rectum. So I think rapid over for us has it became increased the you know surgical challenge. It's my personal. Perfect. I agree. With I think you. that is why it has led to more convergence also in the original. Yeah. Same thing. Same. We are facing also following most of the centers that are practicing rapid uh, The uh, fibrosis, is post radiation fibrosis is so thick because the duration has been more than 12 weeks that it is very difficult even to identify preserve the nerves and to complete the procedure surgically. That is exactly, I think, that is what uh, was, uh, you know, they analyzed the quality of life post rapido and uh, they, according to them, the plexopathy is a little more <coughs> as far as the, as far as the experimental arm is concerned. But I would agree with uh, Dr. Manas sir that uh, definitely the fibrosis is much more and it gets more difficult. Your, your, your experience? One, one thing we have <coughs> standard of practice is that even if you go with TNT, the duration between radiation and surgery should not go beyond 10 weeks. So as it goes beyond 9 weeks or 10 weeks, the surgery becomes very messy. So we want to operate within 8 to 10 weeks. The ProDage 23 looks more promising for a surgeon. I don't think Polyphirinox is going to be tolerated. Our patients are nutritionally they're very poor. So, Arinotecan is a big problem. Any Anybody in the audience would like to comment? So, Polyphirinox, yeah. We have patients tolerate Polyphirinox very okay. So, I don't know why. I mean, in the sense, you know, uh, it's an additional RT. So, probably that is the reason why the toxicity is. No, it's the additional RT as well. Yeah. Probably the radiation which is... And maybe the dose of ironotican also makes a big difference. Like one thing. It's not the prodigy protocol. The chemotherapy, radiotherapy, surgery, the extended chemotherapy. I don't yeah. think we've taught it. Yeah. What is the difference in the dosage? I think, madam, uh, in this classical this prodigy, the ironotican dose is 180. But but people in the pancreas are more using or the tribe data is still with the 150 which we are more comfortable. Indian patients very rarely can tolerate the one in <laughs> So, uh, our MDT said long course uh, chemo RT and uh, after six weeks, uh, we evaluated him clinically. We normally operate at eight, after six we evaluate and that time there was a mild irregularity on PR and uh, this was the MRI. It sh showed that it is involving the underlying muscular. There was a uh, uh, there was a focal residual lesion along the left lateral wall of the mid rectum. Now the MRI said mid rectum, but it was really low. Uh, uh, extends for a length of 3.5 centimeters, maximum 11 millimeters in thickness, approximately 9 centimeters from inner verge, involving the muscularis propria. Subtle irregularity of the underlying rectal surface. So, would you qualify this as an incomplete response or a complete response? And if so, how do you define? A complete response. Yes, sir. <laughs> sir, complete response should be radiological as well as clinical. The clinical, if uh, there is certain amount of uh, induration, but uh, uh, by endoscopy we find uh, that uh, uh, there is only rectal injectasia or fibrotic changes are there. And uh, the new uh, TRG concept that is coming, MR TRG, the tumor response rate, uh, from that we can also understand how much uh, tumor has responded. From MRI as well as uh, clinical examination, no role of PET-CT to identify the response of the tumor. 
So this patient doesn't uh, qualify as a complete response by the MRI study. There's one term called near complete response that's coming up. So maybe it would qualify in that little category. Uh, it's, uh, so would you agree with these terms of the points that are there that uh, clinically you have to have just subtle induration, process presence of whitening of mucosa, telangiectasis without any ulceration, and the proctoscope should allow the should slide in. It should not uh, impede the movement of the proctoscope, the lesion. That is clinical and MRI <laughs> there should be homogeneous low signal intensity of the T2 images, uh, characterizing fibrosis, no residual tumor signal, no lymph node involvement, and most importantly, no EMVI. Would you do a biopsy or EUS? Would you do a biopsy or EUS? Uh, so, okay. so, EUS is not indicative, sir. So, most of the trials, uh, they didn't include uh, biopsy as a part of clinical, uh, complete clinical response. Uh, but it is near complete one, the opera has included near complete one in the, as a, com as a complete, complete response. response. Sir, actually, there has been a publication by the International Weight and Watch Consortium, we clearly defined what should be defined as complete response. And a complete response, they said no biopsies. No biopsies. But if it's a near, to, near complete response, you have to add out a biopsy because it's not, it's, the residual disease usually is not the mucosa size, it's a mucosa disease. So it's a complete response, no biopsy, but near complete response, biopsy, then only you define what you had. The issue with biopsy is if you get a positive biopsy, that's fine. But if you get a negative biopsy, it may not be negative. So that's the issue. Is there a role of local excision? Uh, Murli, is there a role of local excision in such kind of scenarios? I, I, personally, I have not done any local excision in this country, but, uh, but there is data <coughs> that you can uh, go for a local excision, but so a full thickness excision, like something like a tacne or something like that, and then uh, anastomosis. So there is data. So I think it's a Descartes 02 which uh, integrated this. So post uh, response reassessment MRI, if it is less than 2 cm and within 8 cm from the end then we can. Now from our series, uh, 57 patients so far, till August last year had complete response. So you feel guilty, why did I do ABR? But of the 57, only 4 didn't have any tumour on uh, cutting the specimen. In other words, if you have a palpable tumour, that does not mean there is a tumour. But that is a dilemma, how to pick them up, pick them up uh, and avoid uh, you know, surgery. So local excision has been found to be quite uh, decent, uh, though I think very few of us practice, we don't practice it routinely at all. Uh, but it has been shown to have a good uh, DFS and OS uh, uh, and a good stoma-free survival. But for some reasons we do not, uh, most of us I think technically it becomes quite challenging, quality, uh, I mean with the residual, the margins are a challenge again. And it's for not, uh, local excisions. For local exchange, we need to have a frozen sections of the margins Bias. also. And the major problem being how do we assess the mesorectum? We have to assess the mesorectum, how do we excise it? Those are the concerning factors. So he underwent uh, laparoscopic ultra low anterior resection. Uh, the question here is when you hardly feel anything on the mucosa, how do you decide upon the margins? Uh, yeah. Actually, what we do is we go for an on table. Scoping. There was nothing, there is just some thickening on the, it was felt on BR but it was practically I'm telling you, it was just a if you If you had assessed a patient pre-operatively and chopped out the lesion in the tissue sheet or something. I'm an old man, eight weeks before. <laughs> it's a very tricky situation. So you go as soon as possible and say the being done, presuming that your lesion would have been about it. Yes sir. As soon as possible. <coughs> So I think there is no real, I think we just follow the rules of minimum distal margin which is, uh, which is, which has, which can be as less as one centimeter if it is post chemo RT. Uh, this was quite a bulky tumor and this is, this was just, just an outside sign. You see there was this circle that I have marked here that was the, just a little bit of uh, 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 no, the retraction that had happened there. Uh, the mucosa was like this, there was just an induration there, there was no uh, no evidence of any, any tumour there. Histopathologically, however, uh, it showed uh, microscopic residual viable disease and no nodes with CRM being negative. So that, that's what the histopath came. Uh, so let me uh, 
So in this patient, would you give, uh, Dr. Daga, would you give adjuvant again? Uh, sorry, what, what has the patient received initially? Initially it was T3N1. No, no, as a long course chemo. Long course chemo So, yes, definitely some form of 12 to 16 weeks of some chemotherapy. 12 to 16 weeks? Yes. Do you agree with that? Agreeable. I will also agree because What's the histopath report? That, uh, Focal res just a residual viable, YPT1. YPT1. I will discuss with the patient because he is a diabetic, 65, 15 years. So I will discuss, I will say, look, the benefit is a bit controversial. You can take, you may not take. I think it, it will be a shared decision making. If the patient has a uh, note, residual note in the histopath, I think. No, no, no. The, our MDT fight has come to Latakudi now. Because uh, the Vanderbilt uh, meta analysis and Lancet patients who have an NACTRT do not need adjuvant. Uh, uh, only four studies, right? But the Dutch don't get it all, you know. If you look at the Rapido, there is a section where they say that patients who haven't had adjuvant fared as well. That is a problem. That is a problem. We are having a debate because we are not given TMT. <laughs> so, how many would give uh, adjuvant in the audience? Okay. And, uh, Initially, it was a big one. It, it was a bulky tumor. Initially, it was a big yes. one, so we, we, I, I would like. Is I that to have is that a criteria? Would you think about the load? Uh, yeah. So it was T3 and 1. Because there was no extramural uh, in vascular invasion or nothing like that suggested on MRI at least. Yeah, but still no other high risk factors. It was N1. Moderately differentiated. Moderate. In spite of that, I'll give it. That is? <laughs> anyway, he, hasn't, he has just completed. So let's see what <laughs> we will discuss with him. So this is the second case. Uh, this was a 75 year old but good uh, performance score, diabetic hypertensive, growth 1 cm from the anal verge, poorly differentiated, mucinous adenocarcinoma, T4N1, splinter involved, but she was continent. She presented with obstruction of Hartmann's done, procedure given done was a long course chemo RT. Now has had complete clinical response. There is no tumor felt. Uh, now she's already had a Hartmann's complete clinical response. And here's where I would like your opinion on what to do. The best. We'll start with the medical oncologist. <laughs> oh, okay, fine. You can start with me. Anil, when you meant heart man, heart man, uh, the proximal attachment got out of stone. So tumor is there. Tumor is there. Just a heart, no resection. Colostomy. Sorry, colostomy, not a heart. Colostomy. Sigma colostomy. You want to decide. The drums are beating. <laughs> uh, you want uh, the complete response in terms of radiation. Complete response, there is nothing. So this is a potential candidate for weight and much more. So you can just walk and keep on waiting. But, but then you should have strengthened policy on what are the things you are going to do in the next two years, three months, three, six months. Three so in the, in the, uh, uh, so why I wanted the medical oncologist's opinion was, it, now we have the results of this organ preservation uh, uh, trial, uh, opera by, Havarga by the uh, Dutch group, MSKCC. And uh, what what is your opinion on that entire trial? Just to sum it up. Can I just uh, butt in? See, we had a similar patient long time ago. Mm. And just want to share with you, with the audience. Well, I was not that much of So I was very scared. You know? So I got a EUS. And there was a little thingy in the sphincter. The EUS FNA came back as adenocarcinoma. And then we did it. Okay. Maybe so that's a something that's I thought. a great thing. So it has not been mentioned in standard for two blue and you were scared, that's why it over this. Okay. So, so is a uh, standard protocol sir? No, it because it overestimates the tumor. So it has filter involved mucinous adenocarcinoma and the opera says that you know we it has it is now saying that wait and watch is a valid policy. So what would you say? T4 to start with. So yeah. The local recurrence rate will be in the terms of 40 to 50 percent. 
I will not go for the organ preservation for this particular patient. Okay. Even on based on this trial. This is a this trial. had uh, this trial of T3, T4 as well. Yeah. So this is a trial in total, but I am talking about this particular case. Oh. So even if you look at Opera, Opera I told you in 50 percent of the cases you can like propose for wait and watch. So we can presume that no, we, as a surgeon we prefer to go for dissecting the total tumor. Sir, I think the most important thing is that this patient is ECOG4. Mm. Yes. So uh, probably she is not a uh, candidate for uh, surgery. But in case we'll have to do anything, I think uh, local excision is an option for this patient. Considering the lower cost, the lower performance status. What was the new argument? Uh, did she do uh, anything? No TNT. No TNT. So, if you are following OPERA protocol, all the OPERA patients, they received TNT. So, this patient uh, doesn't qualify for that. Yeah. Qualify for that. So, as for matters of discussion, what do you think about the, in the OPERA, uh, what I really feel is that the proportion of these T3, T4 and they have just classified high grade tumors as uh, uh, without really differentiating the, the talking about the subsets and these are only 11 patients and if you see Habargama's own uh, 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 this thing own uh, paper before that about uh, who are what was the clinical what were the predictors for early tumor regrowth in that if you see these numbers you can see that this is most common in T3, T4 and in the poorly differentiated and this is where I think we have to know our uh, our our patients as uh, uh, as far as uh, uh, the uh, rectal cancer is concerned. We have more patients with poorly differentiated, more mucinous adenocarcinomas, younger patients, and uh, more locally advanced. And that is why I think this was this was from Saklani and his uh, and his team at Tata. And that is why I think we don't deal with the different, we deal with a little different disease as far as uh, 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 TNT and wait and watch is concerned. Would you agree with me, Dr. Dr. Manas? If this patient is on Lata Gudi and comes to... If the patient is from Jadapur, yes, but... Uh, am I correct? But if the patient is from Lata Gudi comes to Kolkata, no point putting them on WW, you know, we have to. So I was going to come for that. In fact, this patient actually opted for observation because we explained to her, but she didn't want to go and undergo surgery because of her performance status, as you said. And since she was going to be left with the stoma permanently, as is usual with most patients, they, she just said no. Now, if she does, then what is the frequency of follow-up that you would advise? Yes, ma'am. Every two monthly MRI? No, three monthly. Three monthly. monthly for the first two years and then we can and six monthly we have to do a CCT abdomen to rule out if she's developing any distal meds. And after that, beyond two years we can follow up follow her up six monthly and uh, after five years maybe ready. So this is a pretty intensive follow-up and I think I would agree with Dr. Manas completely that yeah. What so she said, reverse the heart and leave me alone. No, no, so what is saying is this patient has a stoma already. Yeah. So the whole aim of this... The so she said, yeah, I, now that the tumor has responded, reverse the stoma. <laughs> and finish, leave me alone. <laughs> so patient told us sometimes, so that was the interesting part. When you talk about follow-up, you need to have the highest standards when interpreting the MR during follow-up endoscopic ultrasound. So, if you miss out the smallest thing, you will have a problem with it. So, when we talk about keeping the patient with much policy, our imaging department should be the highest quality with highest quality of MR, to pick up subtle changes, and then endoscopic ultrasound may be as soon as possible. Every six months, we cross the key imaging, frequent visits to the doctor. So, I don't know how it will work out. So, that's what I was coming to. There is a patient, patient preferences were studied as far as organ preservation, rectal cancer is concerned. <laughs> And since, like, like in this case, the patient is king, 
83 percent would prefer organ preservation. Quality of life was generally acceptable, and definitely more where there is a permanent stoma. But then in Indian scenarios, it is uneasy lies the crown uh, head that wears the crown. Default is a major issue, and how like uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Manas said. Uh, it is a patient from a remote area is going to find it extremely difficult. This was in uh, this was a poster at uh, ASCO at 22 from from India, and look at the factors. 92 percent of these patients defaulted during the treatment phase of follow up. So this is the problem that these were patients. This is from Ames Dehradun. So this is the uh, uh, from the this is perfectly the thing that we are saying. 92 percent patients defaulted. More than 90% patients were actually given free treatment and yet their problems were cost of transportation, time consumed in committing to a far off center, uh, the social, other social problems that are there and that is why they defaulted. So I think basically they are, we are just leading to them to the guillotine when we say that uh, you know you are the king and you are going to make all the decisions. This is what uh, is the major problem in India. So to conclude I think Wait and watch gives us an exciting option of organ preservation, but we should discuss it thoroughly with the patient after proper uh, assessment and whether the patient understands what intensive follow-up is about. Having a three-monthly MRI is eight. If he is in private, it is almost seven, eight thousand rupees at least every three monthly. Uh, plus CA, plus uh, a clinical examination, etc., etc. So the long-term impact across subsets, I think, is something that we need to study. Uh, and then go ahead with uh, protocols like this and as a conclusion I would like one concluding line from all of you about uh, your take on this entire wait and watch in rectal cancer. So again wait and watch uh, is definitely an exciting option regarding the follow up protocol MRI 6 monthly, uh, Abergama and Opera they have different follow up protocols, Opera says 4 monthly for 2 years then uh, 6 monthly and MRI 6 monthly. And Habergama protocol is three monthly for two years. MRI six months. Seeing the data that we have, we have the data of only three year disease free survival data and recurrence data. So these are not practice changing. They might modify our practice to some extent, but I'll still stick to what I, the classical teaching has been: do uh, new adjuvant CTRT and then surgery. That is what I'm sticking to. Sir, I think this is the future. Yeah? Anything we can, you know, we had Maruti Monday, now we have Mercedes, let's show you the Monday. So, wait and watch, exciting, but the compliance and the education of the population is also important. Sir, I would like to say the SPCC Dostalimer trial, which has come out, 1 crore rupees for one while of Dostalimer. So, for Indian scenario, it's way too long, so we can't just uh, start. Uh, it just start, start is wait and watch so simply. The US people are doing it. But for us, only young people, well differentiated, uh, definitely going for APR, for only those patients, selectively we can try if the patient is absolutely willing for it. Otherwise, no. Uh, we also agree with that because <coughs> practical scenario in our work setup not support this uh, wait and watch thing. I will follow that concurrent chemo radiation, then you adjuvant therapy and then surgery. Yeah, I think uh, it's the same, sir. Patient needs to it. I think it's more of an experimental thing in Indian context, as of now, no. I think we need more data, and as of now, we for selected very motivated patients who need APR. Yeah, I think we have to, we need more data, and we need more Indian data because of that. The same message like uh, the patient has to be compliant and then only we can go ahead with something like this. And just one comment is that the salvage surgery is a disaster. Yes, we covered that. Yes. Once they, they come back with the precursors, uh, really, as a really bad. Any surgery after 12 weeks post art is a disaster. Yeah, what, 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 what question? question? On a wait and watch, I've had two kids, they're all educated. No, no, no. Very no. <laughs> For day to day practice. I would like the opinion of the house. Is there any legal implication? You say one patient to come after three months. You are absolutely all right, all response. The patient comes after three months, four days. There is a recurrence. You ask for an APR operation. She says, no, you said earlier that there will be no operation. And then goes to court. 
court courts details and us uh, uh, these reports no, so i want to know is there any legal implication how to tackle yes, can i comment on that no no yes so uh, this is an issue on the contrary in uk now it's a it's it, the doctor will be uh, subject to legal procedure and if he says that patient there is a possibility of pcr and uh, the patient may not benefit from the surgery so this has to be sister other way around so i think both are uh, difficult and uh, as far as the practice of uh, this uh, uh, total heart therapy there are many institutes started doing it in one institute which is uh, my from my state mbr cancer state uh, hospital uh, they have 40% of cancer patients are not getting operated and i, I think it's going to come in a big way within a year we will get a lot of data about it from mainly from adr cancer center and uh, many centers So I think we haven't started uh, clinical. I think we need to ask the same patients on their follow up if they recur, how they feel about their decision three months or six months back. Only providing, only providing their opinion at the very outset. Yes, they will, they will not be willing. How much percentage of patients who actually consider they have they have made wrong decision or they think that doctor has not guided them properly? Yeah, I think the whole. Uh, thing has to be taken. No, I just want to say one more, one more, more thing. Oh. There is a statement that yeah. the revision yeah. surgery is a service. It's not. Haber Gama has proved it, and Agar has proved again. The I mean, the centers who are doing it, they are not very, uh, very uh, bad with the revision surgery. Yeah. So I would, I would ask, uh, sir, if I can recommend this paper to you, organ preservation in rectal cancer. If you go through that, they have given the exact questions that were asked to the patient. the risk the way it was explained that there is a 25% chance of it uh, recurrence i think all this has to be documented yes. and it has to be an mdt decision when you tell the patient when you put the patient on wait and watch yes. i think then i i don't think there should be legal implication because it's a practice in the you have to uh, you have clinical data which is uh, supporting this decision it is not a decision which is based on experience of one particular surgeon it is a well uh, research uh, material only thing the patient has to be made to understand that this is uh, this is a protocol is and if he adheres to the protocol then it works otherwise it doesn't work but this is a trial that has to be explained no not trial. Uh, it is not a trial i mean the other thing is that at this point of time since we are not rampantly practicing don't like wait and watch majority of these patients like say for instance i have two patients those are essentially patient's choice they did not want the surgery after explaining everything so i think the medical legal implication does not lie there because it's the patient who ultimately chooses that i don't want to do a surgery but that has to be documented <laughs> absolutely documented That's every visit it has to be documented <laughs> So I think uh, with all that heat, I think the jury is still out on that one. Thank you very much, my esteemed panelists, for giving the insight and the wisdom. Thank you, Dr.